Hi guys, I'm Sarah and today I am going to impart upon you a recipe that has been taught to me. I've been getting lessons from an amazing lady called Anne Nolan who's actually won awards for her different varieties of fruit wines. But I did this Fijoa wine last year. I've done two varieties and I'll show you how to do both of them. Straight Fijoa wine and Fijoa with sultanas. They're both quite different and they are both so yummy and I couldn't choose which one I wanted to make so I'm gonna do a bit of both. So we grow all our own Fijoas. We've got a big hedge full of Fijoas and it's brilliant. So I've been freezing them in 2 kg packets because that's how much you need to make one demijohn. Quick explanation, this is a demijohn. It makes one gallon which is four and a half litres. So, but the first thing, we don't need this quite just yet. I've got a couple of these big buckets. You don't have to use buckets this big. We want about two kilos worth of fruit. Um, it is worth freezing the fruit first. When you freeze the fruit, it actually changes the cellular structure, I believe is the words of it. It does bring out the flavor a lot better. Um, now, it's not imperative that you freeze it. It's not the end of the world, but you'll probably get a better product if you do. And so you want to get about two kilos worth of Fijoas. I'm afraid I didn't film myself doing this. I did it a while back, it's been in the freezer. Um, Chop them in half or in quarters or in circles, whatever you want to do. Chop them up. They don't have to be in little wee bits or anything. I will do my just plain Fijoa first. Here I have two kg worth of Fijoas in the bucket. So into this bucket, we are going to add about three liters of boiling water. Now into here, we also want to add a teaspoon of pectinase. So I got that stuff from Binnin. It was $5.90 and obviously for a, a Demi John's worth, you only want a teaspoon. I mean, I just keep this in the fridge. Apparently it lasts longer in the fridge. Apparently it is not the end of the world if you don't add pectinase, but again, you just get a better product. Don't ask me for the scientific stuff. Ask Anne for that. So, just gonna give that a little stir. Apparently when dealing with wine, you should not use metal, you should use wood. Failing me having a wooden spoon, I'm just using the handle of some barbecue <laughs> prongs. So I'm just gonna give that a bit of a stir up. We will be adding more liquid to this tomorrow. Put a lid on that, don't bash it down, don't get all the air out of it. Just loosely sit a, a lid on it. And we're gonna let that sit for 24 hours. Now, I'll show you the beginnings of the wine with sultanas in. Same story, get a bucket, add the Fijoas. To this, I'm going to add 500 grams of sultanas. Put the teaspoon of pectinase in. It doesn't matter if you put this in before or after the water. And as per before, about three liters of boiling water. Put the lid on, and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day. I've got my two buckets. What I'm going to do now, excuse the noise of Lego in the background, kids are happening. I'm going to add <laughs> about one and a half kilos of sugar into a bowl. And into that, I am going to stir in about two liters of boiling water, mix it up until the sugar has completely dissolved and put one of those into each bucket. Now into here, going to add some white wine yeast. So that's the packet I got from Binin. You really just need a teaspoon for each bucket. You can just chuck a whole packet in there if you're only doing, if you just got the one bucket and you got one packet and it's a pain to store it, you can chuck the whole lot in there, but um, yeah, you want at least a teaspoon though. And the other thing we want is a teaspoon of this stuff. It is wine nutrient. You want white wine nutrient. About a teaspoon of this into each bucket. Give that a wee stir. Again, put the lid loosely back on again. We're going to leave this now in the bucket for about four days. So, 
helps if you mark it on your calendar. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you leave it a little bit longer, that's not a major. But um, leave it for at least four days to do its thing. And just give it, use your, use your wooden handle, just give it a wee stir up once a day, each day. It will start to look absolutely disgusting, but don't worry, that's normal. <laughs> so I'm going to do the other bucket now. And we'll see what happens in a, in a few days. We'll see you back here. Okay, I am back for the next phase, which is basically going to be separating the fruit from the liquid. I've got a couple of demijohns here. Again, these sort of things, you can, I guess you can get from brewing supply shops, but also from Binnin. This is an airlock, I'll show you how to work that. I've just got, I've got another clean pot to strain the liquid out into. I'm actually going to strain the fruit out first. Then I'm going to put it in the, put them in the demijohns because otherwise it's just going to be even messier than what it's going to be. It will be messy. <laughs> That's why I'm on the kitchen floor. So this is the just straight feed jar, and yeah, I know that does not look appealing. <laughs> so I'm just going to tip this through the colander to get most of that fruit out. The fruit, by the way. It may be slightly alcoholic, so I wouldn't go giving it to your animals or anything. However, you can put it on your compost. That all strains out. Now to do this in the least messy way possible. From there into here. We will want a funnel. A muslin cloth to strain all the uh, strain the remaining solid matter through and a cup for scooping it so I'm not gonna try and tip that straight into there I'm asking for disaster change positions of this cloth every now and then because it gets all the scummy stuff on it We're going to put this on top, put water in here, and there will be a couple of lines that I'm not sure you can see on the video, but you want to fill the water up. So I've just put some water in there, and it's just below those two middle lines there. And then we'll press this in, form a seal, one side will fill up with water, the other one will be empty. So we're just going to give that a minute and eventually all the, the oxygen and stuff, you'll start to see all the little particles start rising up, which is pretty neat to watch. And this will start blooping. So I'll show you that in a minute. We'll just fill up the next demijohn with the Sultana mixture. Before I forget to mention, leftover liquid, I put in a secondary bottle, an empty bottle, because eventually when... Um, this will all start to settle and all the all the scum will start to settle at the bottom and this will get lovely and clear. And when we transfer it to its next demijohn, there will be a bit more of a gap at the top. You have options, you can either dilute it and top it up with water. I'm not a fan of diluting it. <laughs> so any leftover liquid I put into a spare wine bottle. My husband actually ground down and shaped one of these these nibs so that they actually fit into the wine bottle. So I've actually got my wine bottle there sitting next to my demijohn doing the same thing basically and I just use that as a top up when this needs it. So there we go, pride of place on my bench. <laughs> we have the the ones with raisins, sorry, sultanas on this side, the ones without on that side. Just keep them in a, a semi-warm spot. I've got them here because it's it's warmish. You might see my other videos where I've got this science lab going on in the background. <laughs> so that's what that is. Um, so yeah, we'll monitor the blooping. I will show you as the as the sediment starts to go down. They'll look a lot less milky 
and I'll keep you posted. As you can see here, it is no longer bloop bloop blooping, it is actually stabilised. See there, that's no longer holding the pressure, it's come to the other side. Sometimes it may go a bit up and down, like this one here, it's, it's mostly on that side. If I look at one of the others, that one there, it's mostly on that side, but that's, that's holding pressure, it's no longer blooping away. Sometimes that blooping will be quite intense at the start. Mine was not, mine mostly um, fermented while it was in the buckets I think, so we didn't get much air blooping. <laughs> we need another demijohn and a siphon. So what I'm going to do is, we need this, I've got this on a chair that's at a lower level than what the bottles are currently on. Gonna use my mouth. <laughs> so I'm going to put, put this in the bottle I'm only going to let it sit sort of around here because we don't want to be sucking all that scummy stuff into the new Jimmy John. So I've got it, there we go, I've got it sitting about there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to suck up the liquid and then start siphoning it down into the new bottle. I'll let you know what it tastes like. <laughs> Now, while we're waiting for that to do its thing, this is also, okay, number one, that, that tasted pretty good actually. <laughs> of course you end up getting a taste of it. Um, but this isn't what it will end up tasting like, of course, it's gonna have time. The, the longer it stays in these demijohns, the better flavor it actually gets. And really what we're doing now is just a bit of a game of see how clear we can make this. So the longer you leave it, the clearer it should get. And you can buy clarifying agents to put through, which I have done in the past. I'm going to try and avoid it because sometimes it can alter the flavour a little bit. And this is also why we have those backup wine bottles, because of course there will be less than a demijohn I'm putting into here because I'm leaving out all the scummy stuff. Okay, so most of the stuff in there is, is scummy stuff. So I'm going to use my backup bottle. And if I've still got some left over in this bottle, I'll just leave it in there in case we need future top-ups or whatever. If I decide I need to rack it again, get rid of some more scum out of there. I'll apply the cork back in. And there we go. Now we just need to leave that to start clarifying. As you can see, if I put my hand behind it there, it's not, it's not clear yet. It's certainly, it's not milky like when I first put it in. So I'm going to do the same trick with the other bottle and just let them sit. So that one there, the one without the sultanas, I didn't even need to use the backup bottle. That, um, <laughs> that pretty much just filled up that whole demijohn. Okay, so this is now the story. The plain Fijoa one, look how clear that is. That is beautiful. However, Fijoa and sultana, see a bit of a shadow of my hand behind it but not really so what we're gonna do is this one here that's ready for bottling this fella here I'm gonna put a clarifier through it and just show you what happens first of all bottling what all we need you need a bit well much like when I siphoned it from racked it from one demijohn to the other except I'm gonna use some empty wine bottles the bottles you use you have options you can either use a cork or can use a nice clean wine bottle but make sure if you're using a screw top make sure it still has that little insert that kind of seals it you want the bottle to be nice and clean some of these have still got you know from me getting the label off they might look a bit grubby I assure you they're not as per before there's not as much scum in the bottom of here as the first time I was racking it from one demijohn to another but there still is a little bit, so I'm not going to go right to the bottom. Oh, I can confirm just from that little taste. Boy, that tastes of Fijoa. 
and so it should. <laughs> the flavour will change over time though. I actually found the last time I made this, um, the flavours the flavors intensified. I actually, when I first made it, I much preferred the one with sultanas in because it really brought out the Fijawa flavour. It was beautiful. Over time, I found the flavours actually intensified and the one with sultanas in almost tasted like a liqueur. <laughs> The alcohol content does not increase, and I'm not sure what the alcohol percentage is in this one because, yeah, I just, uh, I wasn't quite onto it with measuring it at the right time, but I can confirm it is alcoholic. The plain Fijoa actually became the firm favourite with us. So that's why I've done a, a one of each, <laughs> because on the Sultanas we might just drink earlier. But we'll also save some, because it is interesting just to see over over six months or so how the ch flavors change all right so i've got six bottles out of there leaving just a tiny little smidge in the bottom this is like the pride moment you know putting the lid on that makes it official i have made a bottle of wine <laughs> it'd be rude if i didn't uh <laughs> this is actually just a little bit from the uh it's very murky it's a bit from the bottom of that so but it smell i mean stick your nose in here you can smell the jealous not really, really strong, but it's feed jealous. There's no denying it. Nice sweet taste when you first put it in your mouth, but it's not, it's not over sweet. Like when you, when it goes down, I mean, you can taste that it's, it's alcoholic, but it's not blow your head off. <laughs> um, no, that is just, that is really nice. That is pleasant. That is feed jewelry. I like it. I'll happily sit down and quaff that. <laughs> but I will show you what to do with the um, with the sultanery one that's still a bit murky. Got some of this stuff from Benin Turbo Clear. Apparently there is different stuff you can get. Now I'm doing a bit of an experiment today because last time I used this, I used the whole packet. Now this can treat up to 25 liters. Now I've only got about four liters going on there. So, I'm actually, and last time I put the whole thing in, although uh, others disputed it, I thought it altered the flavour. I thought you could taste it in there, and I was not happy about that. So I'm going to put about half of this liquid in. <laughs> My husband made this device <laughs> for, uh, for stirring the wine with. <laughs> Now, last time he actually attached it to a drill bit and bzz, it pointed it, beat it up, which is what you want to do. Um, you want to get all the, any air out of it. However, he's not here today, doesn't have his drill on him. We meant to do it over the weekend, it just didn't happen. So I'm just going to do this by hand. Get some scissors, we want to put in part A. Put that in there, give it a good mix up and leave it for an hour. I'm going to put part B in. Not going to stir it this time, just pour it around and I'm going to put about half of it. Alright, so that has been left for about 24 hours. Look how clear that is. Look at all that scum on the bottom. I'm guessing I'm only going to get maybe about five bottles out of this because of course I don't have the top up bottle, I use that. And there's a lot more sediment on the bottom of this. So I'm thinking I'm not going to get that two extra bottles out of this one, but we'll see how we go. Nearly got six. <laughs> I think that last one might have got a bit of sediment in it, but that's okay. That smells, it smells different to the other one. It's, you can still smell the fee jar, but there's more to it. <laughs> that makes sense. I'm so not a professional wine taster. Give me time. <laughs> 
that's a lot more is robust the word I'm looking for it's not much like how I said when I could smell it it's not just fee gelers if I didn't know there was sultanas in here I don't think I would pick the sultana flavor it just tastes like a slightly more robust more complex fee gelers flavor but because I know it's there I know that that's what I'm tasting um, at this point, I would say that this is my preference. I prefer this to the plain fee jar. So there we go. Hey, <laughs> give it a go, guys. If you got the chance to buy some cheap brewing gear at some point, it is it is a fun thing to, to get into. Um, like, leave me a comment, hit subscribe. Cheers. <laughs>